Good morning, this is Sharon from the House of Prayer. God and his angels are watching over you. Angels, was there ever a time when they were seen amongst men? Do they still come? What purpose do they come to serve on earth? How do we get them to intervene? In what cases does God send his angels to intervene? How would we know and recognize their activities amongst men. All these and many more are questions that come to our minds. It is important to establish that there is such a thing as the angelic and that angels still intervene in our matters on earth as directed by the purpose of God. There are times when they are visibly seen. There are times when they are seen as light. There are times when they are seen in dreams. There are times when there is no obvious manifestations in the physical. And lastly, there are times when they take on human form. For even the Bible tells us that some have entertained angels as guests without knowing. It is also important to know and establish that there is is or there are angels assigned to every man on earth and to a people that is a nation, a group, or a sect. When the Bible in the book of Daniel tells us there was an angel assigned duty over Israel, the book of Revelations makes, makes us to understand that it, each of the churches was an angel. Jesus, also speaking, told us that the little ones have angels who can stand before the face of God and many more instances. We can actually move them into action. Yes, yes we can. You can cause angelic intervention. Interesting, right? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, guys. The Bible is filled with evidence, testimonies, and proofs that encounters with angels and angelic intervention has happened before, and it is even possible now. When do we get intervention? Or angels and the affairs of men. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. But to which of the angels said. He at any time sit at my right hand. Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits. Sent forth to minister for them. Who shall be heirs of salvation. This verse tells us that God made angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation, which basically means men and at the end of it is that they are partakers of salvation, which God has intended for them. The salvation is the cast. It's any purpose or process that serves a man, including the salvation brought to us by our Lord. So angels intervene when God needs to minister something to men. This ministry could be ministration of information, strength, understanding, or instructions, deliverance, etc. So they can experience a certain kind of salvation. They do all these to protect and guide men in accordance to God's purpose. Let's look at some of the cases of angelic intervention from the Bible. After baby Jesus was born into the world, during that time, King Herod sought to take his life because he felt Jesus was a threat to him. An angel appeared to Joseph, Jesus' father, warning him to flee. This is an example of an angelic intervention. You see that the birth of Jesus and him staying alive was in accordance with God's purpose, 
In fact, he's the summation of God's purpose on earth. So he enjoyed first class angelic intervention and he was saved from untimely death. However, that doesn't mean only Jesus or special people are entitled to angelic intervention. We have the case of men in Genesis 19, verse 15 and 17 through 17. The story of Lot, when God sent angels to go examine whether the things that have come up to him concerning Sodom and Gomorrah were true. When they ascertained it was, and God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and all that was in it, the angels gave warning to Lot and his family to leave at once. Their future intervened. They further intervened when they were supernaturally brought Lot and his family out of the of there by the Lord's mercy. In this case, also we see that there was a ministering by the angels to Lot and his family. At the end, they experienced or inherited the salvation that God had for them. Lot and his family were saved from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis chapter 21, verse 17 through 19. This is not so popular story in the Bible. It's a story of Hagar and his son Ishmael. He cried out because he was dying of thirst, and an angel of God appeared and spoke to the mother. Her eyes afterwards opened, and she saw a well of water from which she drew to give drink to the lad. If there is anything special about this boy, it would be the fact he was the seed of Abraham. So as at other times, angels ministered and he experienced salvation. Daniel chapter 6, verses 16 through 22. This is a story of the lion's den. And the angel came and shut the mouth of the lion. And Daniel was saved from death. It's important that we share the story to encourage and remind ourselves of such great assistance that we have from God. Psalms 91, verses 11 and 12. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash their foot against a stone. This is as sure as every word in the Bible. And it is time we started believing them. Very soon we would see what we can to do. Actually enjoy them. And that is whenever we need them. Let's look at one more example that pertains to salvation. That Jesus came to give all men. There are many more examples of angelic interventions from the Bible. Like the one when angels fought for men, brought food for them, and they even brought understanding of the future to them. They delivered men out of prisons, etc. All of them written for an example for us. That is no form of angelic intervention that we can't enjoy. Let us look at the particular one before we see how we can move angels into action. Acts chapter 10 verses 1 through 8. This is a story of Cornelius, the first Gentile to believe the gospel and be baptized. Hence, experience the salvation that was brought to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. In his case, he had a dream. An angel came and ministered to him and, and gave him instruction, which was to go find Apostle Peter. 
and the details about where he would find him. At the end, he inherited the salvation that God had in store for him, how to active, activate intervention. Before we know how to get something to work, you need to understand what makes them work or what they respond to. And the same way to get angels to work, you need to understand they what they respond to. To understand that, it's important that we look at this scripture. Psalms 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. This captures... what the angels respond to. They respond to the voice of God's word. So if there is a voice constantly declaring God's word, that voice is sending a signal beacon into the spiritual realm and eventually it will attract angels. We already established that there is an angel to every man and a more powerful one to a territory. Now we know that they hearken to the voice that declares God's word. The more you constantly declaring and God's word increases, the more visible you begin to see the angels working in accordance to that word. This is why as Christians we are advised to activate the ministration of the angels by constantly declaring God's word, whether for, for provision or for protection or guidance. The confession of God's word activates the more the move of the angels. Another thing that is the key to the activation of the angelic from the book of Daniel is fasting and praying. The Bible is the book of Daniel made us to understand that at the moment Daniel began to fast and pray concerning the deliverance of his people, God's people. The prayer was accepted before God and as a reply to him, God sent angels to bring him to understand. Going further, we see that the angel in charge of Israel was moved into action by Daniel's continually praying. You see, it is important to know the angelic is always pronounced around a man of prayer. Elijah was a man of prayer. That is why he enjoyed the ministration of angels everywhere he needed them. Jesus prayed and fasted in the wilderness for 40 days. Afterwards, angels came to minister to him and also recorded in the Gospel of Luke that angels came and strengthened him when he lacked the strength. The angelic is pronounced around a man of prayer. Another key that is to understand God's will and then follow his instructions. At this point, you're effortlessly enjoy the ministration of angels because at this point, it is you who is always or aligning yourself and providing an avenue for God to work and so he will make sure all your needs are met and make sure angels are on standby for you. Understand the will of God and obey them. Amen.